Hey, good morning, church. How are we doing this morning? Good. You guys sound a little bit sleepy. I am too. That's okay. Go ahead and stand up with me. We are going to get woken up here in just a second, or feel free to do it like now. That's cool too. Um, but I'm glad to be here with you. I'm glad to have you this morning. Um, go ahead and worship with us.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing And worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you
Let's go, Cornerstone. I just want to start off by saying how awesome it is to be back with you all. And uh, we missed you, and uh, uh, we missed being here, missed uh, worshiping with you, missed praising the Lord. But I got to say this, the guys did an amazing job up here in the, in the Cornerstone Dad panel last week. And so thank you to, to Mike, Doug, Mitch, and Keaton for an amazing, amazing job just being raw and real on Father's Day. We are so thankful for them and, and, and what they mean to us and what they did. If you're here this morning for the first time, you are a guest of Cornerstone. Cornerstone don't have visitors, we have guests because we are privileged to have you with us this morning. So, so thankful that you chose to come and be with this place, even if it was a friend or a family member who made you be here. Who drug you here this morning? We are so glad that you chose to, to give in and to do that. What a name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Does it, I don't know about you, but every time I say Jesus, it just it does something inside of me. There's power in the name of Jesus. And no matter what we face in life, no matter what we've got to come against or walk through or walk around or climb over or go under, you speak the name of Jesus to it and it makes a difference. And it makes a difference. It doesn't mean that we won't have to go through some things, but it means that he will be there with us every step of the way. I am so blessed that you all are here, each and every one of you. Thankful for our family uh, that joins us online each and every week. So thankful for them. A couple things get out of the way before we jump into, and I know the ladies here as they end up service, they'll, they'll talk about it. But right after service, we got a family camp fundraiser. Please, please stay and, and be a part of that and, and donate to that. Uh, I'm just going to be transparent with you. Uh, family camp cost $17,000 this year, the most it's ever cost, but it was the biggest one we ever had. That's, that's amen. That, that, that's a good thing. That's, I don't care about the money. I care about the people that were there and the lives that were changed. But the reality is the truth. We're in the series of truth. The truth is it takes dollar bills to, to make that go around. So please, even if you can't stay for lunch, donate to that cause. It's one of the biggest events and one of the most important events uh, that we have throughout our year. And if you've never been, please make plans to be at family camp next year. Also coming up next Sunday, we got our faith, family, and freedom. Please, we'll be, we'll be having games, we'll be having food, we'll be having special speakers. And so please, invite friends, family, be a part of that. Let's make it one of the biggest faith, family, and freedom weekends that we've ever, ever seen here at Cornerstone. All right, we've got a little business out of the way. Let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the good stuff. We're, we're going to be over in John chapter 17 is where we're going we're gonna to start out. Uh, this morning, but before we get there, uh, let me give you a little quick refresher course of what we've been talking about the, the last three weeks. And so we've been talking about the whole truth, the whole truth. And in, in today's world, people want us to believe, society wants us to believe that truth is relative. That, 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 that they say that, that truth is relative is to say that absolute truth doesn't exist. That your truth may not necessarily be my truth. That, that, that um, in, in every circumstance, uh, people speak of, of truth being whatever you want it to be. Whatever you want it to be. But God's word says otherwise. God's word says otherwise. That there are absolute truths. Our society today, and, and even myself at times, we try to twist the truth to fit our agenda. Turn on the news. Get on the internet. Get on your social media outlet. And there will be a twisting of the truth, a twisting of the truth to fit an agenda. We all have agendas. Every single one of us that showed, here, showed up here this morning has some type of agenda. Hopefully your agenda was pure, to worship and to praise the Lord and to hear what He has uh, uh, to give to you today through His Word. Hopefully that's your pure agenda. Some of you, you knew that there was uh, dinner afterwards, so hey, I'm going to come up and I'm going to eat dinner, eat lunch. Some of you's agenda was like, man, I, this friend has been on me and on me and on me about to come to this church called Cornerstone. They got this weird guy that preaches just about every Sunday. You got to come and hear this weirdo. Some of you, that was your agenda. Say, I see some smiles from our guests. So I know that's taking place. But we all have 
agendas. And we try sometimes to twist the truth to fit our agenda. You know, our, our young people, I, I, I like to use them. I like to keep their attention. So, so I speak to them. You've got an agenda probably right after this. And, and mom or dad's going to say, hey, you're going to say, hey, I want to go there. I want to go to this place. There's going to be people there. And you're going to say, they're going to ask, say, well, who's going to be there? I don't know people. You know, you're not going to tell the whole truth because that one person that your mom and dad don't want you to hang out with might be there. So you're trying to twist the truth to fit an agenda. I don't know they're going to be there. What are you going to be doing? Stuff. How long are you going to stay? I don't know, for a bit. You know, twisting the truth to try and fit an agenda. Your agenda is to go to a place maybe you shouldn't go, and so you twist the truth to get your agenda accomplished. But we all do that, not just our young people. We all do that. So we all have agendas. And so the question that we asked in the beginning of this series is, do you know the truth? And then we use the clip from A Few Good Men, can you handle the truth? Those of you that that are, are of my age know that movie. Those of you that are a little bit younger, you're thinking, how old is this dude? <laughs> but can we handle the truth? In the first week, we talked about Jesus being the source of truth. You want real truth? You want absolute truth? You want to fight against the lies of the world? Tap into Jesus. Give your life totally and completely to Jesus, and he will reveal the truth to you. What does Jesus' truth do for me? It gives me endurance to continue in a world of lies and deception. It gives me endurance to continue in that. It gives me the freedom to do the right thing. See, as Americans, we think we have the freedom to do anything. God's freedom that he gives us, the freedom through his son, Jesus Christ, isn't freedom to do whatever we want. It's freedom to do the right thing. The freedom to do the right thing. And then it frees me from consequences of sin if and only if I confess those sins to him. Then he can, can, can free me from those consequences because unconfessed sin always has negative consequences. Always has negative consequences. And it frees me from my self-deception because I'm born with a sinful nature. How many of you ever have to teach your kids to lie? Not one single hand went up. And if your hand went up, then you're lying. Not one single parent ever had to teach a kid to lie. It's in our sinful nature to do that. We have to teach them to tell the truth. I thought that's pretty good. I mean, y'all okay? I thought that was, we have to teach them to tell, tell the truth. We have to teach them, don't deceive yourself. You're, not, you're never going to deceive God. You understand that anything and everything that goes on in this world, it didn't catch God by surprise. He ain't sitting up on his throne in heaven saying, whoa. Man, I didn't see that coming. He knows everything. He knows everything he sees. We're not going to deceive him, but we can deceive ourselves sometimes. And then the thing that Jesus' truth does, the absolute truth of God does, it frees us from the lies of Satan. And I use the example when I used to work at a bank with Miss Linda. They didn't give us a, a stack of fake $100 bills. They give us the real thing, and they said, study it, look at it, know the watermarks, know the, the, the characteristics of that $100 bill. They didn't give us a bunch of fakes. And then when the fake, when the lie come across the desk, you're like, hmm, something ain't right about that. It's the same way with the Word of God. If you immerse yourself in the truth, and we're going to prove that the Word of God is true this morning. If you immerse yourself in the truth, you know what that means? That's that dreaded word that especially this group hates. And probably some of us adults study. That's how you immerse yourself in the Word of God. You got to read it. You got to read it. Just like when they give me that real $100 bill. And by the way, I give Mr. Kingsbury his $100 bill back. Don't let him, don't let him tell you otherwise. I, we studied that. We looked at that. And we knew that when the fake come along, there was, it just didn't feel right. It didn't look right. And it's the same thing when you immerse yourself in God's Word. When you immerse yourself in God's word, that lie of Satan that comes along in your spirit through the Holy Spirit, you'll be like, hmm, something's off about that. That's not right. I may not know it. I may not be able to put my finger exactly on what's not right about it, but I better go to the word of God to find out the truth. I better go to the word of God to find out the truth. So we talked about that. But we have to accept the truth because sometimes the truth hurts. We've all heard that saying. Truth hurts. You know, I went to the doctor one time. And she said, hey, hey, D, might be time to drop a few LBs. 
you know, and, and us men, like we talked about here in a, in, a, in, a, in a previous message series, us men, we don't have body images. You know, you ladies got body images, us men, we don't have, you know, I look at a mirror, I'm like, dude, get there, baby. <laughs> Amy's living a dream. <laughs> I'm deceiving myself. <laughs> But us men, we don't have body images. But I go to the doctor, and she tells me, she said, D, you might need to drop a few LBs. You know, truth hurts. Truth hurts sometimes. Sometimes. Or another brother and sister in Christ comes to you and says, hey, I'm not sure you need to be doing that. I'm not sure that's conducive to a pure and healthy relationship with Jesus. That's not fun conversations to have. It hurts sometimes. It hurts sometimes. Or you're reading the Word of God and the Holy Spirit shows up and you got that thing called conviction and you're like, mm, man, maybe I shouldn't be doing that. Maybe I shouldn't do it. It hurts at times. It hurts sometimes. Um, it's, it's revealing both to our need for growth but also just how much God loves you. God loves us so much that He's merciful, He's gracious. And he's patient. I don't know. There's probably not a person in here that he isn't more patient with than me. Than with me. And so, and so that's what we're accepting when we accept the truth. And then the second week we talked about the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to walk in complete obedience. The Holy Spirit gets called a lot of things. Gets a bad rap for a lot of things. Because we don't understand the Holy Spirit. But he is our guide in the path of truth. Some people call it a conscience. Some people call it that inner voice. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, it's the Holy Spirit. And he leads and guides and instructs and walks alongside you and encourages and lifts up and edifies when you're doing uh, what God has called you to do. What God has called you to do. The power of the Holy Spirit changes lives. The power of the Holy Spirit changes lives. In week three, we talked about trust and truth. A lot of times, if you don't, if you don't trust someone... You're not going to believe a lot of what they're saying. You're not going to believe a lot of what they're saying. And so, real true faith is a man's weakness leaning on God's strength. I'm going to tell you, I'm a weak man. But when I lean on God's strength, I become stronger and stronger and stronger. And so, those are, that was a quick, quick recap. We're going to finish this up this morning. Week number four, John Chapter 17, I'm going to skip down real quick to verse 17. I'm going to read it, and then we'll jump back up to verse 1 and read the remaining uh, uh, scripture in this. But it's important because we've got to get a couple of words down here to understand as we read the rest of it. John chapter 17, verse 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. This is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking to God. This is Jesus actually praying to God. In these words right here. And he's praying to God the Father. He says, sanctify them, them being his disciples. And if you're a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, you're a disciple. But specifically, he's talking about the 11 or the 12 disciples here. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Now, I don't know about you, but anybody ever work out math, well, word problems in mathematics? And the word is always represents truth. Equals. Am I right? I'm not a mathematician. Some, some of you smarter people than me. Let me know if I'm wrong. But if I recall correctly, here it says, it says, the truth, your word equals truth. God's word equals truth. Why do we go to all different sources? When the first place, and a lot of times the only place that we need to go is the truth. It's the truth. And we'll pick up all kinds of other things and all kinds of other resources to try and discover the truth. We'll be Googling up everything under the sun when really what we need to Google up is God's Word. Is God's Word. So we've got to understand. So anytime, anytime that you see in, in, in chapter 17 when I'm fixing to read, anytime you see the phrase your word or word, that means truth. You can replace that with truth. With truth, okay? We'll get into sanctify here in just a second. Um, and, and then the other thing that we've, got to, that we've got to recognize is that when you see the word world in chapter 17, that equates to impurity or a lie. 
to impurity or a lie in this particular chapter. So let's begin reading. Chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. So here, I want you to understand something. Here in verse 17, Jesus starts out, or or in, in chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus starts out praying for himself. Praying for himself. And I don't know about you, but there's sometimes when I feel guilty about praying for myself. I do. I mean, all the other issues and problems in the world and, and things that other people's got going on in their lives, sometimes I feel guilty about praying for myself. But guess what? That's a deception and that's a lie of the enemy because God wants you to pray for yourself. Jesus, the Son of the living God, prayed for himself. Pray for yourself. It's okay. It's okay. God wants you to. It's how we communicate with him. It's how he, 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 we share our desires. He already knows them, but sometimes he wants to hear them from you. Our concerns. And so here, Jesus is speaking, he's praying to God. And then in verse 2, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. He's talking about his his disciples. Verse 3, and this is eternal life. First of all, I've got to ask you, who wants eternal life? Who wants to live forever? Right? How many go to the gym? Y'all lying. I, Doug, come on, man. I know you're going to the gym, dude. You told me last, yeah, last week. You're trying to get me to go to the gym. It's okay to say you go to the gym. I'm not going to make you come up here and do push-ups. We go to the gym. Why? Because we want to be healthier. We want to live a little bit longer, right? All of us want eternal life. So how do we obtain that? The doctor will tell you, well, you need to d- drop a few LBs to be a little bit healthier. But spiritually should be more important than physically. And so here it says, it says, and this is eternal life. This is eternal life. That they may know you. Who? God. That's eternal life. Knowing God. That's what we were created to do. To be in relationship with Him. When Adam and Eve was created in the garden. Why were they created? To be in relationship with God. When you're in relationship with somebody, what do you do? You know them. I could have picked out Amy. (laughs) Sounds like I went to the department store or something. (laughs) I could have chose Amy, but if I never talked to her, if I never asked her out on a date, if I never introduced myself to her, she would have never known me. She would have never known me. If you want eternal life, introduce yourself to God. Give your life to God. Give your life to God. He says eternal life. That they, that what it, what's eternal life? That they may know you. The only, and I want you to underline this, circle this, uh, uh, highlight it. The only true God. There are no others. Everything else is fake. Everything else is a lie. Everything else is a deception. Everything else is made up by man. There is only one true God. And if you accept his son, Jesus, you are a follower. You are adopted into the family of the one true God. Amen? That's the truth. That's the truth. Can we handle the truth? And then it says, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Verse 4, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. So here's the thing. How many of you in here are passionate about something? Right, right. Fishing, hunting, quilting. Help me out. Huh? Coffee. Coffee. Right? Passionate. Passionate about sports, music, whatever it may be. Something everybody in here is probably like, yeah. That thing that you're passionate about, somebody said, I'm going to offer you up some tickets to that. You'd be like, yeah, my new best friend. How many of us are passionate to know God? How many of us are passionate to go to God? And I know there are some in here because I'm seeing you take steps to get closer and closer to God. All of us need to be. All of us that call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ need to have the passion to know Him more. Because that passion to know God more will cause us to be in deeper relationship with Him that will then lead to Eternal life. Eternal life. So what are you passionate about? Don't let the enemy lie to you about what your passion should be. 
Don't let the enemy lie to you about what should be number one in your life. Number one in your life. Verse 4. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. All glory is to go to God, number one. Everything that we do in this place, every song that is sung, every skit that is done to open up, And oh, by the way, I can tell that we all, including myself, need to be immersed a little bit more in the Word of God because there was not a whole lot of shouting going on when the answers were due. I don't know about you, but anytime anybody starts giving a biblical quiz, even as pastor, my hands start getting sweaty because the enemy lies to me. He's like, dude, you should know this stuff. And they're fixing to call you out in front of everybody, and you fixing to look stupid. The truth is I don't know everything. I'm still trying to get to know God even more tomorrow than I am today. That's all of us, or it should be all of us. That should be our passion. And all glory goes to God. And then God's going to give you something to do. We don't work our way into heaven. Don't, don't, that's a lie. You can't do good enough to get into heaven. You get into heaven because you know God and you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how you get into heaven. That's how you obtain eternal life. But guess what? He's going to give you a ministry. We're going to talk about our ministry here in just a second. Each and every, I'm not the only one in this church that has a ministry. Each and every one of us, if you call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ, you have a ministry. There are people in your life that he wants you to reach. I'll never see them possibly unless you drag them to church. And, and, and I encourage you to invite them and drag them to church. We've got plenty of seats. You can look around. But we all have a work. We all have a ministry. But all of our work, all of our ministry should be to the glory of God. I don't care what you're doing tomorrow morning in your career. It should be done to the glory of God. Even our physical, physical work. Verse 5. Verse 5 says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Jesus has always been. Verse 6, I have manifested. You know what that means? That means revealed. I have revealed your name to men whom you have given me out of the world. Remember what the world means. World means a lie in this particular context. World means impure. And Jesus is telling God, God, I've shared you with the men that you've placed in my life. God, I've shared you With the women that you've placed in my life. God, I've shared you with the kids that you've placed in my life. We all have a responsibility as followers of Jesus Christ to share him with anybody that we come in contact with. Anybody that God puts in our life. But what happens? The enemy will lie to us. The enemy will lie to us and he'll come up and he'll say, look, man, you you feel that Holy Spirit. You feel that Holy Spirit at school, you feel it at work, you feel it on the lake, when you're, when you're in your hobbies and you got that person that's in your life and you're thinking, man, I know I need, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit, I know I need to share Jesus with them. And what's the enemy do? He sneaks up and he says, they're going to think you're a weirdo. Well, let me tell you something, I don't have to share Jesus for people to think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> so I'm already weird, so I've got one step up on you. But for those of you that aren't weird... Wouldn't you like to be called a weirdo for Jesus Christ and some other reason? Hmm? Wouldn't you rather that person reject you as weird, as a Jesus freak, or whatever, a holy roller, whatever the terms are nowadays, and, ha- and, and at least give that person an opportunity to meet Jesus through you than for them to miss their eternal life? You might be the one that God works through to introduce himself to them. And what a tragedy that would be because we allowed the enemy to deceive us and lie to us that that person missed their opportunity because we weren't bold enough, courageous enough. That's how serious it is. And trust me, I've been there. I've been there in times when God's placed somebody in my path and I missed the opportunity. I missed the opportunity and I laid awake that whole night. God, I'm sorry. I failed that person and I failed you. Please send somebody stronger and bolder into their life. Don't let that be their last opportunity because I failed. I failed. That's how serious, how serious it is. But 
They who they were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. What did they keep? The truth. We are keepers of the truth. If we don't share the truth, if we don't keep the truth, who will? Who will? Don't be afraid of the truth. Verse 7, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words, what? The truths, which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I come forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. We all believe in something. Every single one of us believe in something. What do you believe in this morning? Verse 9, and I pray for them. I do not pray for the world. I do not pray for the lie. I do not pray for the impure things of this world. But I pray for them. But for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world. He said, I am no longer in the lie. I am no longer in the lie. Are you still living in the lie? There's a bunch of stuff going on in the world. Some things that happened this week are awesome. Anytime you can protect babies, that's awesome. But here's, here's what the truth is now. And Amy read this to me. I don't know what platform it was on. And it's so true. We celebrate that. We thank God for that. We thank the leadership that, that, that overturned that decision. But guess what now needs to take place? We need to step up as God's people, and we need to love, and we need to help those babies that are going to be born and those mothers that are now going to give birth to those babies. We can't just shove them out here on, oh, yeah, we got one for the Christians. We need to step up. And that's the truth, and that's hard. Because what does that look like for us? We don't know yet. But we better start praying about it. And we better start asking God, God, what does that mean for Cornerstone Church? How is Cornerstone Church supposed to fulfill that role? But that's an example. That's an example of no longer being a part of the lie. No longer being a part of the lie. Now, <clears throat> I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them through your name, those whom you have given me, and they may be one as we are one. Now he's talking about, he pray, started out praying for himself. Now he's praying for his disciples. And right here he's talking about unity. And there's a lie in the world today saying that you've got to be divided to be successful. Our country, our world is, at, is probably the most divided it's ever been in a long, long time, if not ever. And that's a lie of the enemy. That's a lie of the enemy. We are to be united. You know how Jesus united the world? Come on, somebody. See, I ought to ask this and hope this question <laughs> since they put us on the spot. Love. Love. He loved people to unity. To unity. He loved them so much that he gave. If you love, you give. If you love, you give. While I was with them in the world, in this impure lie, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I kept, and none of them is lost, except the son of perdition. You know who that's speaking of right there? You know who the son of perdition is? Judas. Judas. Judas was the one disciple that was lost. That the scriptures might be fulfilled. 13, but now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Who can speak to the lie and reveal the truth? That I may speak to the world. Who speaks to the lie and reveals the truth? God does. God does. We can sit around and we can try and figure it out and, and determine what's going on and what isn't going on. But it's God that reveals the truth. That's why it's so important that we immerse ourselves in his truth in his word verse 14 i have given them your word your truth and the world has hated 
them. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked when you give the truth and you're hated. Don't be shocked when you stand up for the truth and you're hated. They hated Jesus. They crucified him. Let them say whatever they want to say about us. I'm not hanging on a cross right now. But Jesus did for the truth so that you and I could have access to the truth, so that you and I could immerse ourselves in the truth, so that you and I could live out the truth. And that's what us as Christians have got to do. We've got to continue, and if we're not, we've got to start living out the truth. Living out the truth in front of this world. If we live out the truth, you will see more victories like we saw this past week. You will see a nation turning back to God. You will see nation after nation turning back to God if God's people will live out the truth. Will live out the truth. Verse 15, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. We need to be here. God wants us here. God don't need us. God wants us. God pursues us. He loves us. And he wants us here to live out the truth so that others that he's pursuing can live in the truth, can live in the truth. From the evil one, you know what that is? From lies. Verse 16, they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. God's people listen to me both online and in this building and anybody that listens to this message afterwards. We are not to be like this world. We have to be different. The Bible uses the word peculiar. That means set apart. That means something is different. Something's not the same. And I promise you, the way you live out the truth and the things that come into your life that are difficult and the way you respond and the way you handle them, people are watching and they're looking. And I promise you that God will open a door one day and somebody's going to come up to you and say, man, how did you, that was a terrible situation. And you dealt with it like a champion. You know what I say? I didn't do it alone. The only way I could deal with it like a champion is because I serve the champion. And his name is Jesus. And his name is Jesus. We're not to be of this world. We've got to be different. When people look at us, they've got to say something is different. Don't camouflage yourself in the world when you leave this building. Don't camouflage yourself in the world when you leave this building. This building is not a place to hide in. This building is a place to be re-energized in so that you can go out and you can live the truth and battle the lies so that others can be exposed to the truth. And then, and then it says, sanctify them by your truth. Sanctify them. What does that mean? What does sanctify mean? And I told you, we all have a ministry, each and every one of us. Sanctify means to be set apart for the ministry of truth. That's what the disciples were sanctified in, the truth. Set aside to be ministers of the truth. Guess what? I'm not the only one in this building. I'm not the only one online that should be a minister of truth. You should be a minister of truth. Each and every one of you. You should be a minister of truth. Each and every one of you. You should be a minister of truth. Each and every one of you. That's what we're set aside to do. That's your ministry. How you do that, that's between you and God. Maybe see kids. Maybe see students. Maybe doing something to faith, family, and freedom. Maybe starting a a Bible study at your work. And trust me, you'll probably be the only one to show up for a day or two. But so what? So what? I guarantee you God will bless you in that time. And I guarantee you there will be somebody at your work that he sends or at your school that he sends. You know how powerful it would be? Look at me. I'll get down there with you, big boy. It don't bother me. I'll get right down there on that side. I'll sit in your lap. How powerful would it be when school starts back up in the fall that this group of people right here were at the steps of whatever school you go to praying? How powerful would that be? I guarantee you there'd be people that join you. And there'll be people that make fun of you, but who cares? Trust me, I'm going to make fun of you about something anyway, so it might as well be about praying. The same thing at work. You know, I was convicted. 
I was convicted here recently. I didn't always pray with the ball team. And God convicted me of that. And we started praying with the ball team before the game. Not that we would win. And, and Jace, out of the mouths of babes, he said, I don't know that God cares if the Mudcats win or not. And I said, you're probably right, but what he does care is how you operate in that environment. And so we started praying. And so God convicted me that you're not living out the truth in front of these boys. And so we're praying. And then, and then I, get a, I get a message. I get a message from a dad that says, I appreciate you praying with the boys before the games. That shows a lot. And that text meant more to me than any championship or any medal or any ring that those boys could get. Because I was convicted, I wasn't doing it. I gave in to that conviction and listened to the truth, and it touched somebody else's life. It's not too late to change. It's not too late to change. It's not too late to do a 180. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and the Holy Spirit's been convicting you in your life, and maybe it's a ministry that you're supposed to be a part of, or, or maybe it's simply being in relationship with him. That's free. It don't cost you a dime. It costs Jesus everything. He paid it for you. Your, he's handed you tickets for free to eternal life. I'm going to tell you right now, if someone come up and handed me tickets to a St. Louis Cardinals game, hallelujah. <laughs> we should treat the free tickets of salvation and eternal life the same way. Don't wait. Now, today you can change. Today you can accept Him as your Savior. All right, I'm going to finish up with this. I know we got food in the back. and Y'all are excited about that. John 14, a verse that started this whole, whole series and started this whole thought. John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. There's some troubling things in this world right now. There's some troubling things in this world right now. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe the truth. Believe the truth that is the word of God. Don't let all this other garbage fill your mind and your heart. When you feel upset, when you feel discouraged, when you feel confused, when you feel nervous, when you feel stressed out, when you feel afraid because of the shape that the world's in or the things that you're having to face in this world, go to the truth. Go to the truth and it will give you joy unspeakable and a peace that we can't explain. Believe the truth. Verse 2, in my father's house, I love this verse. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. If I was lying, if it wasn't true, I would tell you. When it's not true, Jesus will always tell us. When it's true, He will always tell us. And I don't know about you, but we spend a lot of time trying to build mansions here in this place. We spend a lot of time and effort and energy and resources trying to build mansions in this place. But right here, Jesus tells me, if you believe the truth, if you operate in the truth, if you live out the truth, if you share the truth, oh, baby. Oh, baby. I'm building you something. Woo. Let's go, people. Woo. When the arms start shaking like that, y'all better get excited. Because <laughs> I'm getting her fired up. A mansion. He's got something so special for you that he's built. It's got your name on it. It's your address. It's your residence. It's your dwelling place. It's your eternal home. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is a billion times better than anything we could build in this world. Give me all the silver and gold and all the dollar bills and all the hundred dollar bills and all the wealth and the power and the fame that this world can throw our way and it won't touch. It won't even scratch the surface of what God has, what Jesus has built for you and for me. And each one of us 
has our name on that residence. And all he's saying is live out the truth. Be in relationship with me, and it's yours. Hmm. I'm going to tell you right now. If I'd have walked up to Amy, and I said, hey, I got a billion dollars, and it's all yours. All you got to do is be in a relationship with me. <laughs> huh? And Jesus is saying, I've got something so special for you. But just like we were quizzed, at the beginning of this service, this life is our quiz. This life is our test. This life is our shot. God is saying, you love me? Live for me. Live in my truth. Don't worry about all this other stuff. Don't worry about all this other confusion because I'm, I'm not the author of confusion. I don't cause chaos. He may allow it, but he don't cause it. Live in my truth. And you got something so amazing waiting on you. And then he goes on to say, I don't know about you, but I like mansions. <laughs> Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. That's a promise. That's a promise right there. Jesus says, I promise you that I'm coming back for you. Whether it's when I lay down this body, Jesus is going to be standing right there at the entryway of heaven. And God's going to flip through the pages of all of our lives, every single one, this test that we're taking right now, this journey that we're taking known as life. One of these days we're going to lay down this body. And God's going to be on his throne. He's going to be flipping through the pages of Pastor D's life. And he's going to see that I either lived in the truth or I lived in a lie. I either lived out the truth or I lived out a lie. If I lived in the truth, you know what he's going to see? He's going to see the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, covering the pages of my life. Not that I didn't ever make a mistake. Not that I didn't ever fall and mess up. Because I do. But then the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, D, you need to ask for forgiveness for that. Ask for forgiveness. Get up and go back on. Get, get up and keep going on. How many of your kids never mess up? I was hoping there'd be one because I would want some parental counseling. <clears throat> How many of you stop loving your kids when they mess up? I didn't say want to. I said, how many of you do? None of us. God's the same way over, on a, over about a billion times stronger. He doesn't stop loving it. There's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. He loves you right where you're at today. The enemy's going to lie to you. You're going to be sitting here and the enemy's going to say, you know what you've done in your past? You know this person that brought you to church is sitting next to you? They know what you've done. They know how you act at work. Miss Linda's seen me at some of my best moments. I'm sure she can tell you some stories. Others that I've worked with. Have seen me in my best moments. Can tell you some stories. And the enemy says, because you've acted like that or you've done that, you're not good enough for that mansion. And God knew that we weren't good enough. That's why he sent the truth. That's why he sent the truth. And in fact, you don't believe me, there's like four or five of you that do. I'm going to jump down. Now I'm going to read it all. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And then Thomas, you know, doubting Thomas, he steps up, verse 5, as he says to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. Do you want eternal life? Jesus is the way. Do you want to stop buying into the lies? Jesus is the way. You want freedom from addiction? Jesus is the way. You want freedom from sin? Jesus is the way. You want to break the bonds of sin? Jesus is the way. You want fear to leave your spirit in your life? Jesus is the way. You can buy into all the other lies of the world to try and get rid of all of those things. And I'm not saying that there's not some things in this world that we can use to aid us in that. 
But the first step should not be them. The first step should be him. The first step should be him. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the truth. Jesus is the truth. And then, he's the way. He's the way to truth. He is the truth. And if you buy into that, if you give in to that, if you give up to that, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I don't know about you, I live a pretty good life, praise God. But it's nothing compared to the life Jesus has for us in eternity. Nothing compared to the life that Jesus has for us in eternity. So, I have to ask you this. You've been given the truth in the last four weeks. How have you handled the truth? How have you handled the truth? Is the truth speaking to you right here, right now, this morning? Maybe it's one of you. Maybe it's one of you. Maybe it's one of you. Maybe it's one of you over here in this section. Maybe it's one of you online. That the Spirit is speaking to. Maybe He's delivering a word of truth to you right now, this morning. I want no distractions right now. Nobody moving around, nobody up, nobody talking. I want every head bow and every eye closed. This is vital. Nobody looking at your neighbor, nobody looking around. What is Jesus speaking to you right now? What word of truth is he speaking into your life? It's not fun and games right now. This is serious. Take this moment serious. Because your eternal life depends on how you receive the truth that you're being spoken to this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, <clears throat> we bow before you this morning. We thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your word of truth. Jesus, we thank you so much for being willing to be the truth in the flesh. Heavenly Father, Lord, if there's anybody here this morning that you're speaking to, Holy Spirit, if there's anybody here that, that you're moving in their life, we pray right now, Lord, that you would just give them the boldness and the courage to receive the truth that you're speaking into their life. Lord, if there's anybody here, whether it be a younger one or an older one, Lord, that has not received you as their Savior, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that you would open their eyes, their hearts, and their mind to their need to make you their Savior. Lord, help us not to buy into the lies of this world. Give us the wisdom and the clear eyes to see the truth and to live out the truth so that you can be glorified in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you In Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you.
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. in the song brought scripture to mind and I don't have the reference but feel free to look it up because I know that it's in the Bible um, but the words we sang said I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken and the Bible says where our treasure is there our heart will be also it's not where our heart is there our treasure is I had to look that up because when that was pointed out to me I was like what but it does say it says where your treasure is your heart will follow and so you're here, so you have given your time. So I firmly believe that your heart is here. And we can take that one step further to just go deeper into trust with the Lord. Um, to give our treasure and our tithes and our offerings to Cornerstone Church to help the ministry that um, is being done in these walls and outside of these walls. So there are boxes at the back of the room that you can drop whatever the Lord um, lays on your heart to drop. You can do it online or through the Tithely app. Uh, but right now we're going to take a moment to pray over that. And I just encourage each of you to close your eyes and be still and listen to what the Lord is calling you. All right, so let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you that you um, continue to invite us into deeper trust, into deeper relationship with you. And I thank you that it's a relationship between each of us and you, that we have individual responsibility to respond to you. And I pray that as you speak to the hearts in this room this morning, that each of us would say yes and that we would lead where, or we would follow where you lead. 
Lord, we love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So if you're a guest today here at Cornerstone, we just want to um, sincerely welcome you. Um, as you probably notice that the altars get filled up a lot, most Sundays, uh, we do want to just meet you where you are. Once you're here, you're family to us. Um, we all have different struggles and trials that we go through, and we like to just be real with each other here. We don't really care for church mass. And so if you're here, I think there's probably a reason you're here, and we just want to welcome you and hope that you will be back. Um, there are cards on the back of your chair if you just want to fill those out so that we can get in touch with you, um, especially if you want to mark to have lunch with the pastor. Darren and Amy would love to meet with you and um, get feedback from you and just get to know you and tell you what some of the things we have to offer here for the community are. And we just hope to see you involved with us. Yeah. Speaking of involvement, that was a good segue. Um, up on the slides is the most upcoming event that we have. So it's right after service. You don't even have to go to your car. You just walk out the doors and through the foyer and get some potatoes um, and all the toppings for our fundraiser for camp. I think that was the next announcement. I'm just supposed to tell you to look at the slides yeah. and Facebook. We're, we're good. We're good. Um, but be watching social media and website and slides to find out what's going on. Okay. See students and see kids. Even if this is your only time you've been here, you are cordially invited. Uh, me and my husband are the see student leaders, so I am cordially inviting you to come have a pool party with us at Wagner Pool. It's this Tuesday, it's 6.30 to 8.30. Please bring friends. This is not a Cornerstone exclusive event. Please bring your friends and come on party with us. Slides, there you go. All right, since I already said the potato thing, I'm gonna get all out of whack here. Um, so next Sunday, July 3rd, is going to be our Faith Family Freedom event. It's gonna be Part of the church service, or is the church service and event all into one, it's going to start at 11. So if you're here at 1030, awesome. We will put you to volunteer to help set up for something, move chairs or something. But it does start at 11 next week, and it's going to be across the street at the 2535 building. I'm assuming outside, so just keep that in mind when you're getting dressed. It's going to be warm outside. Um, but we are excited to see you there and bring a friend. And um, we are wanting to show you, uh, since we are doing the lunch today for a fundraiser for next year's family camp, we just kind of want to give you a little preview of what to expect at camp, so we're going to watch a quick video.
taste. Just a taste. I promise those pictures don't even do it justice of what awesome of a time we have at camp um, and how spiritual it is. I mean, every single night. Um, it's very spiritual. If you've never been, please, please, please come. Please make plans to come next year if you can make it. So we're going to end the service off. And Not Hope's yet. Got one so more I thing. forgot like half of the information for next <laughs> Sunday. Sorry about that. Um, details of the family freedom, faith family freedom event. Bring lawn chairs and a dessert and a friend. We will have a veteran speaker, a dunk tank, snow cones, water slide, games, and more, plus church. Yes? Is Pastor okay. D going to be so, in the dunk tank? All right. Pastor D's in the dunk deal. tank. Okay, so All vital right. information for next week. Now we can If close. you're a guest here, we like to do a little hashtag at the end of the service, and I'm just going to say hashtag um, keep. keep. Good grief. I was about to say serve big. <laughs> hashtag keep, and then they're going to say climbing, okay? Hashtag keep climbing. Have a good week, everyone, but see you at lunch across the hall.